to the human population, uh, which are relatively new compared to the other virus, um, the other vaccines that uh, we used to get uh, years ago. Um, I wish to hand over to Benjamin to share briefly about Busoga Health Forum, and then I'll introduce our speaker. Um, and I hope our speaker is on now. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shiba. Uh, welcome members to our, our routine. Uh, this is one of the projects that we are having to give capacity to the people within Uganda and beyond. Uh, we're so great from, uh, we are always having this introduction. For those who have been part of this ACMEs, you have always heard what I'm going to speak, but for those who are new, you need to understand who we are how uh, we are forum and we envision our health and thriving Busoga. This goes beyond the boundaries of Busoga. Any person who feels that this involved this region can join these efforts. Um, uh, as a forum, um, we are an independent voice and convener of health professionals who are, link, who, who are having a feeling that we should develop this region. A membership organization, and we include more disparate mix. We go beyond the profession as well, made because we invite whole specialists because we know health is beyond uh, just being sick. So any, anything that's going to contribute to the well-being of a person within our country, we welcome uh, all members to come and be part of us. Uh, we advocate, we have out of advocacy um, activities we are doing within the region, and we are think tag. Uh, and we do all our activities based on evidence. We are evidence-based organization. And that's our vision just as I began. Uh, we envision to see a health and living Busoga. Our mission is to, co uh, is to convene and coordinate partners and stakeholders efforts to improve health and livelihood in the region. And just as a good organization, we have values. Um, one of our values is variation, collaboration and integration, impact focused, transparent and accountability, and uh, effect, um, effectiveness and efficiency. And these are methodologies, uh, some of the strategies we are using to achieve our mission and vision. Uh, we have health workforce capacity building initiative. Um, this year, you know, taken for granted lies under that strategy. Work streams, stock technical working groups. We are partnership and networking. We work with every person who is in line with our vision and mission. And so those are some of the programs, our core programs. We are having interventions that are, are for within Ramnak, that's reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health. We are having interventions in HIV, uh, malaria and TB, nutrition and early child development, regional planning and data use, NCDs, urban health. You can um, find these uh, uh, presentations, the, uh, presentation we are always having on and this same is but even other our other resources our website is so resourceful please you can visit it it is uh also uh but you can also follow us on twitter facebook uh the recordings of these sessions are uploaded on our youtube if you miss a point or you have a friend who is missing the same e they can always get on our youtube uh, channel but you can also send us a message on our email and um, we we shall be proud to to have you as a member membership organization. Thank you so much for being part of Busoga Health Forum. Thank you very much, uh, Tatumwa Desmond, for that uh, overview of the Busoga Health Forum. And it's my hope that we'll get more people joining um, as we go along. So I have the pleasure. To, inv uh, to invite our speaker and to introduce her. Our speaker today is none other than Dr. Sabrina Bakera Chiteka. She is a senior lecturer and a specialist pediatrician whose goal is to improve the health of children and adolescents. Uh, Dr. Sabrina is a member of the Rotary Club of Kampala where she serves as the Rotary Foundation Director for the year 2023 to 2024. 
Sabrina is married and has five amazing children. Uh, Dr. Sabrina, it's an honor to have you on this forum. You have 40 minutes within which to deliver your presentation, and we're excited and looking forward to hear you speak. Over to you, Sabrina. Thank you very much, the moderator, Dr. Shiba Jita. It's always an honor to be uh, speaking with our Soga Health Forum, which has become a force to be reckoned with. Um, I'm happy to be presenting a topic which I find very useful and important. And I'm sorry that I will not be sharing my video for the purpose of attaining better bandwidth. But please let me know if you can see my slides. Yes, we are able to see your slides, Dr. Sabrina. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. So I'll be talking about the value of HPV vaccines. And I have no conflict of interest to declare at this point. And I want you to know that uh, human papilloma virus is a small double-stranded virus it targets human epithelial metaplast uh, metaplastic and glandular cells. There are over 200 different strains of the virus. Um, 30 to 40 of them affect the anogenital region and 15 to 20% of them cause cancers. Some of them cause genital warts and cervical dysplasia and the prevalence data for non-reportable diseases is not available. The virus itself looks really pretty. It reminds us of um, other viruses which look amazing and beautiful, but are extremely dangerous. So HPV vaccination is a key strategy for comprehensive cervical cancer control and prevention. Two doses of the currently licensed HPV vaccines need to be administered to nine to 13 year old girls to prevent infection of the two types of HPV, which account for about 70% of cervical cancer cases, according to the WHO. The full benefits of HPV vaccine in reducing infection and the subsequent risk of cervical cancer will not only be appreciated in the years to come, but even in the decades after the girls have been vaccinated. So as we vaccinate our nine-year-olds, our 10-year-olds, these benefits are going to be seen when they are in their 40s, in their 60s, and many years from the time they've been vaccinated. So just an epidemiology of the HPV vaccination uh, infection. 11% of the estimated worldwide prevalence is in Africa, and especially countries like ours. 34% of the world's prevalence is in East Africa, 20% is in West Africa, and 17% is in Southern Africa. And in the US, um, HPV is one of the most commonly transmitted infections. The highest prevalence rate or incidence occurs in women less than the age of 25. So these could be college students, high school students who are sexually active. And this data was from Bruni et al. So sorry for some of you who may be having your dinner. Some of the pictures I'm going to share are quite uh, not palatable at all. But HPV presents virtually in all cervical cancer cases, and the infection is generally indicated by the detection of HPV DNA. So the critical serotypes include serotype 16, 18, 31, and 45, counting for up to 80% of cervical cancer cases. And screening programs are effective where they are well implemented. Cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women, overall, but also may be more common than other cancers in women in developing uh, countries. In Uganda, data from Denny, Anolu, and others showed that 
by age standardized rate of cervical cancer, there's about a rate of 44 per 100,000. There are other cancers that have been caused by HPV, including valvular cancer, vaginal cancer, penile cancer, obviously, which occurs in men, anal cancer, and even oropharyngeal cancers are contributed to about 60% of HPV. So what about HPV and anogenital warts? HPV 6 and 11 are responsible for over 90% of anogenital warts. Anogenital warts look like um, cauliflower, and they can cause an overgrowth in those areas. So these are examples of anogenital warts in the valvular area, as well as on the penile shaft. But vaccination makes an age group a uh, difference in all age groups. And the SAGE sitting in Geneva in 2008 recommended that HPV vaccination could actually be given to women until the age of 45. But obviously, better immunogenicity happens below the age of 15, and even better below the age of 26. So what about HPV vaccines in Uganda? And I know that I have presented this information before, but for purposes of learning and relearning, it's important for us to know that the HPV vaccine was launched universally in Uganda in November 2015, and we have since vaccinated more than 8 million girls. Two doses are administered six months apart. The eligible population are 10 year old girls out of school or girls in primary four for girls in school. But there's a mixed strategy using um, a satellite or standard health facilities, then outreach programs and the Child Days Plus also supports the vaccination. So this is the HPV vaccination card. Typically, it has um, the name of the patient, facts about HPV vaccine, and the two doses when they are supposed to be good. And HPV is usually given, you know, hand in hand with uh, tetanus and diphtheria. So they are given at the same time. So this uh, performance of the vaccination since uh, they did a pie showed that a girl who's not fully immunized until they've received a second dose, there was very low uptake for the second dose and the first dose is usually very well covered. And so if you look at data that was analyzed by the Ministry of Health, there are peaks when the HPV vaccine is given. And those are usually the child days plus. So vaccination of adolescents is safe and it needs to be seen as a high priority for adolescents whose previous immunization is lacking or incomplete. And vaccination is started during adolescence and can be completed at any time after the process has started, even though it has been interrupted for even a year. There are common questions which parents ask. One, is the vaccine safe? What are the side effects? What if I vaccinate my child and she becomes more sexually active? I want to reassure parents out there that vaccinating your child for HPV does not necessarily make her more sexually active. Some parents ask, when should this vaccine be got? Can she wait until she's older? I have told you that the vaccine is better immunogenic, immunogenic when the girl receives it before the age of 15. There are more questions. What if someone currently uh, was infected with HPV? Will the vaccine treat it? The likelihood of treatment or boosting Im immuni immunity when a person has HPV has been studied, and yes, it can actually help to clear uh, the virus. What happens if you cannot come back for the second or third injections? If you delay to come back, we shall start from where you stopped. And will a woman need a pap smear 
if she's vaccinated against HPV virus, yes, she will need a, a pap smear later on, moving on. What about boys? Uganda's chose to vaccinate only girls because of the high prevalence of cervical cancer, because we don't have enough money to vaccinate both boys and girls. But in other countries, uh, the HPV is a gender neutral vaccine and it's actually being given to boys and girls. And in the private sector, they are also vaccinating boys because as you saw, HPV can cause uh, penile cancer, it can cause genital warts, which can also affect the boys. So if a parent is concerned about promoting risky behavior, please note there are no data that link vaccination with earlier sexual activity. And it's important for us to emphasize that cancer prevention and the link between HPV and cervical cancer is known. And these are universal recommendations. The efficacy of the vaccine is known. It prevents up to 88 to 90 percent of the cervical cancer. So generally speaking, adolescents need to be vaccinated during the time they become adolescents. And adolescents are people aged 10 to 19. So we repeat the tetanus and diphtheria. We offer HPV vaccination. We give hepatitis B if they were not vaccinated. And then the measles and rubella as well as the yellow fever vaccine. I am not going to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, but it's also been given during adolescence. So I share some um, CDC immunization schedules so you can be able to access them yourself. I'll share the slides with the moderators. So we run a general adolescent clinic at Makere and Molago, and it offers beyond immunization. So psychosocial counseling, career guidance, school health. Um, this clinic started over 10 years ago. I'm happy to announce that a similar clinic has been opened in Mbarara. So in the Western region, there's Mbarara, and I hope that Busoga region will also soon have a specialized adolescent clinic, as well as all other regions in Uganda. So these are just images and you don't need a flat screen to engage adolescents. You don't need a tennis court. You don't need um, video games. Adolescents just need confidentiality, a non-judgmental and respectful healthcare providers. And it's important for us to obtain immunization history, complete the missing series, deal with the common childhood diseases that appear during adolescence and young adulthood years, and the vaccinations should be avoided among adolescents who are pregnant, who are febrile, and those who have immunosuppression. So we've tried to raise uh, user demand. We have an HPV comic book. We've done school outreaches. We do skills building sessions in which we encourage adolescents to understand why they need to be part of the vaccination promotion. And this is just an example of the HPV comic series. We've distributed over 1,000 copies, both written in English and Luganda. And the SWAG Plus is a peer pressure group that was started by a student at Namagonga which supports uh, HPV vaccination, but also talks about cancer prevention. I'm going to quickly talk about HPV and HIV as a double burden, because women living with HIV are four to five times greater at risk of developing cervical cancer. And currently, we know that um, the elimination strategy for cervical cancer includes vaccinating 90% of the girls by the age of 15, screening at least 70% of women by the age of 45, and treating 90% of women with precancerous lesions. As you see, this is the uh, cervical, the HPV virus, and this is the HIV virus. And each country needs to meet the 90, 70, 90 targets by 2030 
but also each country needs to meet the now 95, 95, 95 targets to end AIDS in our population. So one out of 25 cancers worldwide are linked to HPV. And these, as I mentioned already, include cancers of the head and neck, respiratory papillomatosis, anal cancers, and even genital warts, and cervical cancer, and penile cancer. This uh, two maps really are a reflection of where there is high HIV prevalence, there's also high cervical cancer prevalence. And it tells you a lot that there's an interaction between HPV and HIV. I'm not hoping that you're going to read this slide, but um, I just want to reiterate that the vaccine is safe. It has good immunogenicity and even good immunogenicity among people living with HIV. Um, these are some papers that I thought I should share with you. The safety and efficacy of human papillomavirus vaccination among people living with HIV. And this was a meta-analysis by Long Lezan, Swan Liu, and others. And people ask, what about HIV-infected individuals who are children? And this data also shows that there's good antibody response among children living with HIV. And recently, uh, Dr. Nelly Mogo from Kenya showed that there's long-term immunogenicity among girls and boys living with HIV after they've been given cervical, I mean, HPV vaccination. Uh, recently, one of our students, Dr. Sekina Hassan, who has completed her master's, showed that there's a low uptake of HPV vaccination among HIV-infected adolescents. And this data shows that the prevalence of HPV vaccination amongst this population was just 1%. And many adolescents have not been vaccinated just simply because they have no knowledge, they fear the side effects, and sometimes the HPV vaccination, vaccines are not available in the hospital. So just to summarize, HPV vaccination among people living with HIV is important. There are high rates of good seroconversion and children living with HIV also need to be vaccinated with HPV vaccine. These are recommendations from the WHO in terms of vaccination that um, people living with HIV, regardless of their age or serious uh, uh, antiretroviral status, should get at least two vaccines, but where possible, three doses. Our screening has to continue. At the Baylor Clinic where I work, they have a good program for screening for DNA, HPV DNA detection. And obviously it's a good practice to treat as soon as possible within six months, if there's any histology showing cervical cancer, suspicion. These are recommendations from the US and Europe. And in developing countries, HPV vaccination and testing, especially for HIV positive women, needs to become a reality. So this is just a summary of all the things I have said, that HIV HPV co-infection is rife, it's very common, and we need to eliminate both diseases together. And we have to build synergies. Given the association between HPV and HIV, we need to leverage on these synergies and focus and have an integrated approach to saving women's lives. And these synergies between HIV response and the efforts to prevent and diagnose and treat cervical cancer through HPV vaccination, education, screening, treatment, we all need to maximize them. The Society of Adolescent Health in Uganda is um, a society that brings together all people working with adolescents. And in May 2024, we are going to have an um, annual scientific conference. It's going to be our 10th. And I urge all of you to be interested and come and attend this conference because we are going to 
discuss a lot of things that deal with adolescents. So at this point, I'd like to thank my parent department. I'd also like to thank the Friday Adolescent Clinic team that makes a huge effort to ensure that the vaccines are given to adolescents whenever they come. And I also would like to say a big thank you to MSD that supports some of the work I do, but also the Interest 2022 conference from where I presented many of these slides. And I want to say uh, thank you for listening in, and I'll be happy to take any questions. So over to you, uh, Dr. Jitta. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Sabrina, for that uh, very elaborate uh, presentation and for sticking within time. I think we've saved time. So there's enough time for us to handle the question and answer session. Um, so quickly. Okay, so I'll start with um, right from the start. There's a question from um, Edward, Edward Mogwanya. And he's asking, what is the coverage of HPV vaccination in Uganda? And what are the challenges associated with the program to reach out to the intended target? Um, can't boys also benefit from the vaccine? That's from Ronald at Pura. I think uh, Dr. Sabrina has answered that. And then uh, third question, what happens when the vaccine is administered to already sexually active girls? And can it be given to virgins up to 25 years? So I'll pause there, you take those, and then we'll take another four questions thereafter. Uh, thank you so much for the questions, very interesting questions. So like I showed you, and maybe I could show this again, that the post immunization evaluation done by the Ministry of Health actually showed that this was in December, the first dose of HPV-1 was about 83%, and then the HPV-2 coverage was 22%. In, July, in uh, 2017, they showed um, HPV-1 was 72% and then 28%. But I know that the recent data, which has been shared by the Ministry of Health, actually shows really good coverage of up to 98% for the intended age group. And close to 80% for the second dose. But of course there's vaccine hesitancy for this particular vaccine, HPV, because of the misinformation that has gone around with you know, parents worrying about the, the issues that I talked about. Uh, will my child become more sexually active? What happens if you know, uh, my child gets the vaccine and something happens to them. All this is misinformation. Yes, boys can also get the vaccine. I, I already shared that. We know that boys too can get um, other cancers, including penile cancer, enogenital cancers, and even oropharyngeal cancers. And as people have changed the way they interact sexually, we are seeing more and more head and neck cancers that are happening and which are related to HPV. Can a girl who's a virgin, how do you determine virginity? It's difficult, but at our clinic, we vaccinate girls up to the age of 26 actually. So a lot of medical students and university students come in. We don't want to confirm if they are virgins or not. We vaccinate them anyway but encourage uh, people above the age of 26 to routinely go and do their pap smears, especially if they are sexually active 
or if they've had a baby. I hope I've answered most of the questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So we'll take another couple of questions. I think you've answered um, Namuli Indwa's uh, question, what happens when they administer vaccine to a girl who is sexually active? You've just answered that. John Were is asking, can it be given to virgins up to 25 years? You've just answered that. So you go up to 26 at your clinic. Is it advisable to vaccinate teen mother of 17? The answer is yes. What are the stats for uptake of the vaccine since the COVID-19 pandemic when girls were out of school? Uh, second one, for routine vaccination, does it mean at a specified time in a year or it is daily? Can girls receive the vaccine any day in a year? And then relatedly, um, Pairi Ruth asks, are we supposed to start afresh for those girls who missed second dose? And then a twin, can the vaccine be given to women above 26 years who are sexually active? Mm -hmm. So I'll kindly take those. And if you need me to repeat, happy to do that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, certainly data shows that during the COVID-19 lockdown, when students were not in school and there was a limitation of movement, the vaccine rates went down. But following the, the reopening, and that's the data that I shared from UNEPI, that Uganda has had a good comeback and there are good vaccination rates of up to 98% for the first dose and up to 88% for the second dose for the targeted population. So, like I said, there are many strategies in which the vaccine is delivered, including um, the Child Days Plus, that's in April and September, but also at the health facilities. At the health facilities, you can walk in anytime and get the vaccine. And as long as you have a card, that card will be followed. Six months later, you can get your second dose. Do we restart afresh? Like I said, if you got your vaccine in January, and then you did not show up in June, you can actually get the second dose in October. You do not restart. I hope that is clear. What about uh, women above the age of 26? Like I told you, um, the scientific advisory group of experts uh, sitting in Geneva in 2008, agreed that women up to the age of 45 could actually get their vaccines. If you have done your pap smear and it is negative, you can actually go and get your vaccine up to the age of 45. After that, the usefulness of the vaccine has not been studied. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Esther Nakazi asks, what are the reactions? of the comic book by your clients. How can we create demand for the HPV vaccine? Then Karunji asks, what if an adolescent missed the vaccinations, is already in her 20s and is interested in getting the vaccination? I think you've just answered that. We hope the slides will be shared. Yes, we shall. Can a girl who has already aged or you mean participated in sexual intercourse get vaccinated then binta asks what happens when a woman is in in her 50s and takes the hpv vaccine and annette i'll allow you ask your question please unmute and ask and then uh, dr sabrina will respond to those questions Annette Auma, your hand is up. Okay. 
in the interest of time, I'll read her question. I assume it's this is what you wanted oh, to. You have not given me the opportunity to unmute. Now I'm able to unmute and talk. Thank you very much, Dr. Sabrina. I've heard a lot and uh, my question is, yeah, we have seen that in other countries, all about the presentation you said, it is supposed to be given to every woman and even to the other opposite sex. And uh, we have been having, we, are, we as the country, we are having challenges in, uh, in the issue of uh, purchasing these vaccines. Is there any way that we think our country in the future will be able to provide this vaccine to the opposite sex and also to other females? Because where I am, up to women of 55 years, they are given this vaccine. And then the other thing is, what is the benefit of, because we have different age groups, what are the benefits of probably giving a young, a, um, a lower age group or a middle age group or the extreme end of the age group, this vaccine, where does it work more best? Is it in the early, middle or late, or it is equally, the advantages of getting them is equally in all age group, irrespective of the age of the, the woman. Hope I'm clear, thank you. Can I answer the questions? Yes, please uh, go ahead and respond to those. Okay, so uh, building user demand has included the HPV comic book, school outreaches, skills building sessions, and having girls develop their own peer pressure group. So the HPV comic book was written by my colleagues and I, Dr. Monica Namuli and uh, another colleague, supported by, interestingly, um, an engineer who was previously using the same platform to talk about um, safe cooking fuel. So um, Doc, uh, Engineer Rossini and then Dr. Mas Mata Ferraso, we wrote the the, the story, and then we were assisted by the Remnak comic developers to, to, to talk, us, talk about a story really, which was a conversation in a class. And once these young people read the book, we've given the book to children as young as six years, eight year olds. And after they read the book, they walk up to you and they say, when can I get the vaccine? As healthcare providers, it is important for us to learn how to communicate in a very simple fashion. Today, as parents are waiting in the adolescent clinic, I give them the comic book and they read it. And by the time they come and get a prescription for the HPV vaccine, they have clearly understood why their daughter or their son, if they choose, should be part of the children who get the vaccine. Because it is very clear in this comic book why the value of the vaccine is so important. So I hope I've answered that question. Uh, for those of you who are near uh, Makere and Molago, feel free to come and pick copies of this comic book. I'm also happy to share a soft copy so that you make your own printouts because this work, this work is free and available for everyone. So what about girls who are sexually active? Even today, I received a young lady from the university. She told us she was sexually active. Do you want to first check me and see if I have HPV? And we said, it's okay, we'll just vaccinate you creating any barriers for the vaccination process is a deterrent for uptake. And so we do not try to look and see if your hymen is present, yes or no, we will vaccinate you as long as you're less than 26. 
So what happens when a 50 year old takes the vaccine? Obviously nothing will happen, but their immunogenicity towards a vaccine response and given the duration of support and usefulness of the vaccine reduces the older you become. Yes, indeed, in other countries like um, the um, Americas, in Australia, in Canada, they give the vaccine to both boys and girls. And the age group of, of onset of the vaccination is nine years and up. Studies have shown that the antibody response is better when the patient is still young and has a robust immune system. The older you grow, the less likely the vaccine is going to respond and give you useful antibodies. So just to answer you, uh, Annette Auma, it is better to give the vaccine early even before the young person has started kissing or having sexual intercourse and when their immune system is still robust and stronger. So the best age group, even from the CDC guidelines, is the vaccine should be given as early as 10 to 13 years. But the vaccine catch up for those who miss is up to 45 years, but preferably the younger, the better. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over those questions that have already been asked. Um, somebody's asking, I hope the presenter, that's Mukasa Pius, goes over the current national guidelines for HPV vaccine nationwide. The need for HPV vaccination is self-evident, but both knowledge and access to the vaccine are still a huge barrier, especially in hard to reach areas of the country. Um, Edward Mugwanya is asking, where will the upcoming conference be held? Um, Gerald is asking, is the Friday adolescent clinic for a specific catchment area, or we can send adolescents from up country? In summary, what services are offered in the clinic? And then Emmanuel says, the challenge that we face is negative attitude that the community has towards HPV vaccination. They think that if they get vaccinated, they'll end up getting cervical cancer. And this has led to reduced uptake of HPV vaccination and cervical screening. And then um, I'll ask Dr. Professor Waiswa, please ask your question and then we'll have uh, Dr. Sabrina respond. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Shiba and uh... Dr. Sabrina, I wanted to ask, uh, I, I think there is evidence that uh, one dose of um, HPV, vaccine, HPV vaccine is enough. Uh, could you comment on that? Also, uh, could you comment on uh, the efficacy or how good is this vaccine in preventing uh, cervical cancer uh, in those who get the vaccine as recommended? Thank you. Dr. Sabrina, please go ahead and respond to those questions. Uh, thank you very much for those questions, uh, Pius. Um, our national guidelines, as I already mentioned, uh, request that we give the vaccine twice. Uh, we are still giving the by by dual dose, which is uh, six months apart. And the target for our country is people aged nine to 13 years. 10 years ago, when we started our Friday Adolescent Clinic, I had a discussion with people from the Ministry of Health. And in our clinic, we offer the vaccine up to 26 years. We know that there's always um, spillover with the vaccine 
almost reaching its peri, you know. And so utilization needs to be increased in the private clinics and also in specialized clinics. That is why at our clinic, we vaccinate until 26 years. But on the child days plus, the recommendation for our country, because there's limited amount of vaccine, and this needs to be very clear, the vaccine is given to girls in primary four or girls aged nine to 13 years. Those are the UNEPI guidelines. So the upcoming conference is going to be held in Kampala. It's going to be announced and the dates are 21st and 22nd of May. So please prepare your abstracts. We will announce as far and wide as possible so that you attend our 10th Society of Adolescent Health Conference. The adolescent clinic is open to every Ugandan. We have seen adolescents from as far away as Mbarara, as far away as Oyati, but the majority of our clients come from in 20 kilometer radius of Molago Hospital. But for sure, we are underworked. So do send us as many adolescents as you can. We shall serve them. The slide I've shared is just what we do, offering psychosocial counseling, career guidance, school health, medical exams, you know, those, you, those exams that they request before you go back to school, we offer them for free. Our clinic is free. It runs only on Friday and it runs from 8.30 in the morning up to 1 p.m. We have a team of doctors. We have psychologists. We are able to refer to a psychiatrist or an obstetrician. And we are happy to receive the adolescents. So please send us your clients your children, your sisters, your cousins. Yes, there's been a lot of negativity towards the HPV vaccine. And I think it arose from a misnomer of the vaccine being called the cervical cancer vaccine, with some people then misunderstanding that the, the vaccine itself causes cancer. The vaccine does not cause cancer. The vaccine prevents cancer. So for us, having listened to this presentation, I'd like all of us to go away understanding that the vaccine is of benefit. So please read this slide again, and I'm going to share the slides, that HPV vaccination is a key strategy for comprehensive cervical cancer control and prevention. Please be change agents, be our support, be part of the change we would like to see. There's no pain in seeing a mother or a sister or a cousin dying of cervical cancer from an early age of 28 or even a productive age of 41. And yet this disease could have been prevented. Professor Peter Weiswa, that single dose discussion is a big elephant in the room. And I'm not sure if this is the right fora for us to discuss it. There's still a lot of studies ongoing and various debates. But as we continue to deliberate on this question, the current guidance is that two doses of the currently licensed HPV vaccine need to be administered to prevent the two types of HPV, which account for about 70% of cervical cancer cases. Until there's a revision of this guidance, we are expected to follow the current guidance. Thank you very much.
Um, thank you very much, Dr. Sabrina. Um, your presentation has um, uh, steered a lot of interest. There are lots of questions. I'm afraid we are short of time. We won't be able to answer all your questions, but we'll pass them on to Dr. Sabrina. And if time allows, she could respond and we post these on our website and you access those questions, those responses. And, uh, but I really want to thank you uh, for clearly speaking to the value. It's my hope that we are all living today convinced that uh, there is value in uh, vaccinating, taking up this HPV vaccine for both our girls and the boys. And at this point, I want to invite our chair for the Soga Health Forum, Professor Waiswa, to have the closing remarks. And I request Desmond kindly reshare the link. Somebody has said uh, the link is not working for joining the Busoga Health Forum. So kindly repost it. And there is information on the CPD points register within the chat from uh, Desmond. Please access that form if you would want to get uh, CPD points. Over to you, Professor Waiswa. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shiba Gita. Uh, Dr. Shiba Gita is actually our vice chairperson. And uh, thank you for uh, coordinating and also moderating the session today. Um, Dr. Sabrina is um, quite a very active member of Atlas Against Forum, always supporting us in different ways. And uh, I work with her closely on many issues, especially around vaccines. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sabrina, for taking time again to come and educate health workers. This is an important topic. Uh, for me, it annoys me that we have tools like vaccines and then the population is not taking these tools. So I would like to invite, there has been almost 300 of us here today. I'd like to invite everybody go and tell somebody to get their child vaccinated. My girl who is 10 years, uh, 10 and a half, was vaccinated recently for her first dose. And the, my other daughter is also vaccinated. Uh, like Dr. Sabrina said, the cancers, especially cervical cancer, is uh, uh, the number one cancer in Uganda, and yet we can prevent it. We have the tool, but we need to use it. Thank you so much, Dr. Sabrina, for a wonderful presentation. And uh, I think let's work together to come up with strategies on how we can reach our communities, because um, I don't understand really why we have quite low coverage for cervical cancer in Uganda, yet it can be higher. So Dr. Sabrina, in recognition, in appreciation of um, your time and presentation, you have a small token of, uh, of um, uh, a, a small token from Musoga Health Forum in terms of a certificate of appreciation. It is on um, the screen, but you receive a hard copy or soft copy. Please kindly accept this small uh, certificate of appreciation. And we hope to see you back at Wusogais Forum. Thank you, Dr. Sabrina. Um, Thank you Dr. Very much. Dr. Waiswa, you've projected mine and not Dr. Sabrina's, no, but here think, we have you. Yeah, both of you will get. I think the first one was for Sabrina. Uh, so okay. that is for Sabrina. And now uh, also Dr. Shiba. Uh, this is actually to energize you to do even much more at your Sagas Forum. So please receive this smaller token uh, as, a, uh, as a token of appreciation from Sagas Forum. I think reaching girls, uh, please bring Dr. Sabrina to on the ground in Usoga. We need the comic book, we need the clinic. Dr. Sabrina, as you know, after Kampala, the way, next sir. Yeah. I was actually in Evokula about a week ago and worked really hard and spoke with the girls. And I'm happy to come back again to Busoga to speak to more yeah. girls. Thank you. 
Yeah, you come and uh, you know this is where the beautiful girls come from. So you can have more girls without cervical cancer. Thank you so much, uh, Shiba. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina. Shiba, please follow up Dr. Sabrina so that we get on the ground to mobilize people. Maybe she should come to the radios in Ibusoga so that she can reach many people because all these radios in Ibusoga give us free airtime. Uh, for the members who have joined, thank you so much for joining. See you next uh, Friday at the same time. Please go and mobilize the public so that kids get vaccinated, especially those uh, adolescent girls who are 10, 11 years. Thank you and have a good evening and a good night. Thank you, good night. Good night. Good night.